What's up, you guys? Welcome to Integration B Training for Advance. And of course, we're still in King's Rule. And in this section, we're going to be going over some uh, trig, trigonometric identities uh, within King's Rule. So we'll be dealing with trig cases uh, with, with King's Rule. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have this case where we have sine of x cosine of 1 minus x dx. Now, you can be like the other competitors where you could just integrate by parts, which is torture. But we can do something much faster. right? So there's something suspicious here. With King's Rule, we have 1 minus x here. And we have from 0 to 1. Huh. Can we think of something with this? Yes, we can. We're going to use a trig identity uh, in a way that you won't probably wouldn't expect. Uh, but here, if I let u equal 1 minus x, of course the bounds don't change. But now we have sine of 1 minus x cosine of x. Again, we can interchange u and x. Okay, we are at a level where we can just interchange variables. Okay, so now what? So we have this and we have this integral. How does, how does this change anything? Well, they both equal, okay, and so they both equal to i. So now we do i plus i, which of course it obviously equals to 2i, but we're using two different forms of i, right? We're going to add them up together. Sine of x, cosine of 1 minus x, plus cosine of x. I'm going to rewrite it this way so that you can see what I'm doing. So what do you realize? Now this is a trig identity. This is the uh, additional angle identity. So pretty much this whole this whole function is equal to sine of x plus 1 minus x which equals to sine of 1. Wow! So our integral here is equal to sine of 1. And so our answer is sine of 1 over 2. This is our answer. Look how quick that was, right? So much faster than doing integration by parts and uh, plugging in the bounds. So this integral is very difficult to solve for those who are completely new to King's Rule. So there is an important identity, a very important identity that you must uh, remember. We will come across this so many times in this level. Inverse tangent of x, inverse tangent of 1 over x. Okay? There's something you might be careful with, and that's like the bounds. So in this case here, we will have this, this would equal to pi over 2 if 0 is between x to infinity, negative pi over 2 if negative infinity uh, between negative infinity and zero. So pretty much if in the domain of the bounds here, uh, if it's at the positive side, it's going to equal to pi over 2. If it's at the negative side, it's just going to equal to negative pi over 2, and that's it. Okay. So definitely remember this. Uh, the majority of the times in competitions, they'll mainly just use the positive side. Uh, I'd hardly see anyone use the negative side. Uh, now that I brought that up, my, maybe some competitions might do that now, unless they're watching this video. But uh, you know, for in case if people have evil intentions, just be very wary of uh, of the bounds. Make sure that if it's positive, then then yeah, you could just say pi over two. Uh, if not, if it's you're at the negative domain, uh, be very careful. It's it's the negative pi over two, not not positive. So how do we solve this integral? Well, what's suspicious about this. We have 0 to 1, 1 minus x. 
Uh huh. Yep. This is a. Uh, this is most likely King's rule. But how are we going to use King's rule with this? We're going to use this identity, and you'll you'll see what I mean. Okay. So of course we let u equal one minus x, which is just going to give us. It's what it's going to do is it's just going to flip, right? That's all it's going to do. It's just going to flip. And so now we have this integral. If this is equal to i, and this is equal to i, what this means is that to i, adding, adding two different forms of, of the same value, we get x over 1 minus x plus inverse tangent of 1 minus x over x dx. Okay. Of course, we're at the positive bound, so we're good. That means that this whole thing is equal to pi over 2. Yes. It is, it's not just x. It could be literally, um, I don't know about a function. It depends on a function, I guess. I don't know. But the majority of the time, like things like this, like you have inverse tangent and then the reciprocal inside of it, this this it's the majority of the time it's just gonna equal to pi over two. So of course what we have here from zero to one is equal to pi over two dx. Okay? And so now our answer for this whole integral is pi over four. And that is our answer. Now that you learned that trick, go ahead and do the same thing with this one. Trust me, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Don't be, don't be intimidated. Take a deep breath. Just, just kind of go with the flow. Okay. All right. So, of course, when we let u equal one minus x, uh, then x and one minus x just kind of flip. Uh, switch places. So what we technically have now is 1 minus x over x squared and then we have this which technically doesn't really make a difference because it uh, they are commutative. Okay so now if we add these two integrals together we get 2y equals from 0 to 1. Again, if these are like, uh, you know, big functions, you can go ahead and let alpha equal this version and let beta equal this. And note that alpha plus beta is equal. Oh, we're in positive down. Okay, good. Alpha and beta is equal to pi over 2. Okay. So what we have here is we have alpha alpha square. Now we are adding these two, so we technically have two alpha beta plus beta square, which equals to alpha plus beta square. Aha, uh -huh. and we know that alpha plus beta is equal to pi over two, uh, like what we saw. So what we have is pi square over four. Okay, and so our integral is pretty much pi squared over 8, and that is our answer. I wonder if you remember your trig identities for uh, tangent. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I covered it in the intermediate training for trig manipulation. I don't, I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember covering it. I probably didn't. Of course, we see some 1 minus x here, x and x, okay, maybe there's king's rule that might apply. So let's go ahead and just try this. And the only difference it's going to make is it's just going to give us 1 minus x on top. And then here, just never, nothing changes. Okay, cool. Now what? What do I do? What like do what do what we usually do? Add these two integrals together, right? 
same denominator. And then just kind of add these two together. Now be very careful that this integral is equal to 2i. Okay, do not forget that. If, if you don't want to make that mistake, when you, when you add uh, integrals to itself, you can just do a half just like that. Okay? Now, now what? This should look familiar to you. Uh, if you don't know your trig identities, it's okay. Uh, pretty much what's going on is when you have tangent a plus b, this is equal to tangent. I think I have I showed you guys the knife song <laughs> of of this identity. Probably like a very old video, uh, but I I made a song to memorize this trig identity, and it was like I used the knife song. I promise I'm not emo. I just it, it just perfectly fits it. Uh, but you know you can just sing along. You know tangent a plus b equals to tan a plus tan b. All that divided by one minus tan a times tan b. And then uh, if tangent is subtraction, uh, then I am a very uh, slow writer. But if tangent is subtraction, then tan a takes tan b. All that divided by 1 adding tan a times tan b. Okay. That's a very poor handwriting. But you, you get the idea. And of course, what do we have here? This is exactly what we have, right? We have this correlates to this. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So pretty much what we have here is this whole thing is equal to tangent of x plus 1 minus x which equals to tangent of 1. So our whole integral is equal to tangent of 1 over 2. And this is our answer. Oh god. This. This looks scary as hell. <laughs> okay. What the hell is going on? So we have to use another advanced trig identity. Uh, especially if you're doing G main or the joint entrance exam, you're gonna need this uh, um, this formula. So, we have a formula where whenever we have inverse tangent of x plus the inverse tangent of y, this is going to equal the inverse tangent x plus y all over 1 minus xy. Okay. So, how are you going to... Uh, do this how how are we going to solve this integral so let's first uh, let's let's kind of deconstruct this okay so I don't blame you this is actually very uh, difficult to see for for those who are new to this identity so let me show you uh, this here uh, I want to turn this I'll go ahead and show you the solution so that you are aware of this. Uh, this is not very easy to see. It's not very easy to see, but it does come up a lot in like calculus Olympiads. So let me go ahead and show you this trick. Okay. So it's it's the fact that we have this here. Okay. This correlates to this. And I don't blame you, it's very hard to see. And I'm going to show you that right now as to why. So inverse tangent of x squared minus x plus 1. I'm going to rewrite it as 1. And then x squared, I'm going to rewrite this as x, oh, I'm sorry, 1 minus uh, x minus x squared. Okay. And the reason why I wrote it like that, you're probably seeing this now, now that you, you know, 0 to 1. Uh, this is 1 minus x, 1 minus x. And 1 is equal to what? 
1 is equal to 1 minus x plus x. Ah, what do you notice? Ah, uh, yes, this is equal to the inverse tangent x plus inverse tangent of 1 minus x, right? So, okay, so now we know that this here is equal to this, okay? All right, let me just kind of correlate this. Uh, well, actually, no, I lied. I'm sorry. No, uh, not exactly. Uh, pi over 2. This is equal to pi over 2 minus this. And then uh, this. Uh, yeah, so, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and just write it out. So here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to write it out just to ease our stuff. So... We have, this is a negative, so technically we have inverse tangent of, I'm going to rewrite it as 1 minus x plus x squared minus pi over 2 minus inverse tangent of x, and then we have inverse tangent of x plus e inverse tangent one minus x again it's a lot of crazy function writing so if you want to sort of solve this fast you know what we do we'll let alpha be this function and let beta be this function and now we already showed that this function here this inverse tangent is equal to inverse tangent of x plus inverse tangent of one minus x so what we have here is we have uh, alpha plus beta minus pi over 2 minus alpha all over e to the power of alpha plus e to the power of beta okay and the alpha cancels out okay interesting okay so now we have this now what what do we do now we let u equal 1 minus x and so now, of course, this just becomes a half, just to get it over with. And then, of course, be, uh, for beta, when you do u equals 1 minus x, beta becomes alpha. Beta becomes alpha. All right. And then we have minus pi over 2. And, of course, alpha becomes beta. Beta becomes alpha. But, of course, uh, the denominator doesn't change because commutative property. Let me put dx here. Okay. So now what? What do you notice now? What do you notice now? Of course, what we can do... Huh. What can we do? If you notice that if we add... I'm sorry. Uh, this I realize this should not be a half. Uh, because this is one-sided. This is, this is still equal to y, though. But we didn't add it together yet. Now we're going to go ahead and add it together. Now we're going to go ahead and add it together and get uh, beta minus pi over 2 plus e alpha minus pi over 2. So be very careful. Be very careful. I almost screwed myself up there. Okay, so now what? What do we do now? What do we do now? In case if this was hard to see, you can just factor out e to the power of minus pi over 2, right? Yes, we can. And when we do that, when we do that, e beta, e alpha, e beta, E alpha this cancels out and so we're left with this is one and so our answer our answer is a half of e to the power of negative pi over 2 that is our answer and we're done I know that's a lot I it's it's a lot but of course uh, practice 
makes perfect and just get very comfortable with King's Rule like this. Okay? All right. That is all for uh, trigonometric identities trick with King's Rule. Uh, if, I know it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of uh, difficult, sneaky tricks. But again, uh, I would suggest to rewatch this video and instead try the integrals yourself. And then if you get stuck somewhere, go ahead and watch the solutions. And then keep doing that until you become more comfortable with these integrals, okay? It, it, it increases your awareness uh, with these tricks. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.